PCDC On Air, the podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Keeping up to date with European epidemiology. Hello and welcome to this podcast. My name is Catherine and I am your host for today's episode of ECDC On Air. This is the podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, which is recorded from our headquarters in Stockholm, Sweden. In this episode, we are going to talk about healthcare-associated infections, data collection, and the tool we use to assess the situation at a certain point of time. To understand better how the whole system works, we have with us today Diamantis Platuras, an expert on healthcare associated infection at the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Good morning, Diamantis. This is not the first time you have been invited here to talk about healthcare associated infections. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be again a guest. Uh in this podcast. A few months ago, we did a podcast with you on this uh, subject. It's the episode 37, which explains in detail what healthcare-associated infections are. Today, we are going to look at a related topic, the way you measure the number of patients affected by these infections. To start with, Just remind us briefly who you are and what you do at ECDC. My name is Diamantis Plachuras. I'm a medical doctor with a specialization in infectious diseases and I am uh, the lead of the ECDC team that coordinates surveillance or monitoring of healthcare associated infections in the European Union. ECDC published the results of the latest point prevalence survey of healthcare associated infections and antimicrobial use in European hospitals. What is a point prevalence survey? Well, um, in a point prevalence survey of uh, healthcare associated infections and antimicrobial use, we measure the proportion of hospitalized patients with any type of healthcare associated infection or taking an antibiotic on one particular given day. We invite all countries of the European Union and the European Economic Area, but also countries from the Western Balkans region to participate in this survey. So how many countries are participating in total? 31 countries participated in the last survey we performed in 2022 and 2023. So how often do you do these surveys? ECDC is coordinating such Europe-wide studies every five years, and we started in 2011. The last one was carried out in 2022 and 2023. So some countries did the survey in 2022 and other countries did it in 2023. And this is the third European-wide survey coordinated by ECDC. What do you do with the, all this data that you collect? In the last survey, we collected and analyzed data from a total of more than 1,300 hospitals and 300,000 patients. After we collect the data, we analyze the data and then we provide feedback to the countries. We publish a report and we also produce communication material. And finally, we also produce uh, some scientific papers to look in more depth in some of the issues that are addressed in this survey. And uh, what are the main findings of the last survey you did? The last survey I performed, as I said, in 22 and 23, and the results of which were just uh, published, showed that on average, on any given day, one out of 14 hospitalized patients have a healthcare-associated infection. Critically ill patients are the most at risk for such infections, as one in four of these patients in intensive care units suffer from such an infection. This means that in total, each year, about more than 4 million patients in European hospitals acquire at least one healthcare-associated infection during their stay in the hospital. The survey also showed that the most common healthcare-associated infections are uh, infections of the respiratory tract, such as pneumonia, urinary tract infections, and surgical site infections. These three types of infections actually account for more than half of the total number of healthcare associated infections. How has the situation evolved over the last few years? Well, the situation has changed and comparing with the previous surveys, healthcare associated infections have been more frequent in hospitals. But one of the major reasons behind this increase was that in recent years and especially since the COVID-19 pandemic, SARS-CoV-2, the virus causing COVID-19, 
was the fourth most common microorganism responsible for healthcare associated infections. So this was an emerging microorganism that was not there before, as uh, we all know. And healthcare associated COVID-19 was a key factor contributing to the overall increase that we saw in the prevalence of healthcare associated infections. This reflects the large impact of a potentially fatal but ultimately preventable disease. COVID-19 actually accounted for one out of 14 healthcare associated infections and for nearly one out of four of all lower respiratory tract infections. So it was quite common in the last survey. So do you mean that without COVID-19, the figures would go decreasing? I think from what we saw so far, if we take out COVID-19 and uh, if also we take into account some other methodological changes that were introduced in the last survey, the results would be roughly the same as in the previous surveys. How do countries use this work? Well, the situation regarding healthcare-associated infection, uh, antimicrobial resistance and antimicrobial use varies across uh, the countries a lot. So the countries and the hospitals can compare their results with other countries and hospitals and identify gaps and targets for improvement. The results are also used to demonstrate the burden of healthcare-associated infections, which is very useful for increasing the awareness of the issue among healthcare workers and the public, and also they're very useful for policymakers and uh, hospital administrators when making decisions about measures to control healthcare-associated infections. How does it improve the situation? Well, actions can be taken at the hospital, country, and also at the European level, but even the individuals can take measures, for example, the healthcare providers. And these actions are important for preventing these infections and ensuring safer healthcare for European citizens. Overall, why is it important to prevent healthcare-associated infections? Well, healthcare-associated infections are the infections that one gets while, uh, you know, uh, being hospitalized for another reason. For example, to be operated or uh, for treatment of another condition. And to show you the impact of healthcare-associated infections, the importance of these infections, let me tell you the story of uh, Areti, who kindly shared her experience with ECDC. Areti now is 25 years old, but when she was 13 years old, the doctors found that she had a treatable form of leukemia. She was admitted to the hospital, uh, she was given chemotherapy, but then she had a healthcare-associated bloodstream infection with a bug that was resistant to all but a few last resort antibiotics. The doctors had to discontinue chemotherapy for some time, meaning that uh, her treatment for leukemia was, uh, as you understand, at risk. The infection was also very difficult to treat. Fortunately, she recovered and the leukemia eventually was cured, but such infections often have serious consequences, sometimes even leading to death. But how can those elscar associated infections be prevented to decrease their impact on hospitals and on the health of patients? Well, we know that at least one out of five healthcare-associated infections, and probably many more, can be prevented by a continuous and comprehensive infection prevention and control programs, which is activities in the hospitals that focus on preventing such infections. So the main uh, elements of such programs for example, include, uh, on the one hand, simple infection prevention and control measures, such as, you know, appropriate hand hygiene, having clean hands, as we discussed in our previous podcast, and also ensuring that alcohol-based hand wrap dispensers are available at the bedside so that the healthcare workers can use them when they need to, to use them. And there are also more complex measures, such as, uh, for example, making sure that each hospital has a sufficient number of single rooms to isolate the patients with, for example, microorganisms that are resistant to antibiotics or other microorganisms that can be transmitted from one patient to the other. Also, we need to make sure that uh, there is uh, an adequate number of specialized infection control staff. And uh, finally, one uh, important measure is to make sure that we have good regular monitoring of these infections. Antimicrobial resistance is a big problem in European hospitals. What did the survey show on that, uh, on that topic? Well, antimicrobial resistance has the biggest impact in hospitals. As we know from uh, data that more than two out of three cases of infections and deaths related to antimicrobial resistance are actually linked to healthcare-associated infections. The data from the latest point prevalence survey, the one uh, that was performed in 2022 and 2023, confirm this very high impact of antimicrobial resistance. 
one in three microorganisms from healthcare associated infections are bacteria resistant to important antibiotics, thus leaving us with very limited options for treatment. In European hospitals, particularly, the situation with one such bug, which is called Klebsiella pneumonia, which is resistant to carbapenems, this is, and this is a last line group of antibiotics. What is left after that is not very effective, and in some cases, there is not much left after that. This situation continues to deteriorate. What do you do when a bacteria is resistant to antibiotics? One then has to find another option to treat. Uh, Could be another antibiotic, for example? Yeah, usually it's some uh, other antibiotic, but then in some cases, the antibiotics that are available are not as effective or have many side effects. So the treatment of these infections is very complicated, may take a long time and may have a large likelihood of failure. Were there um, positive uh, developments in antimicrobial resistance over the last years? Well, fortunately, there we saw a considerable improvement in another type of bacteria, which is called methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus in several countries, resulting in an overall decrease across Europe. And this case is an example of how the situation can shift to the better, but also shows that urgent action needs to take place for other resistant bacteria. The Point Prevalence Survey maps also the use of antibiotics in hospitals. Why is it important and how is it related to antimicrobial resistance in hospitals? Well, it's simple. Overuse and misuse of antibiotics leads to increased antimicrobial resistance. The appropriate use of these medicines is key to reduce the emergence and spread of these resistant bacteria. And what we do about that is that uh, we apply antimicrobial stewardship programs which are activities that ensure that antibiotics are used appropriately in the hospital. So we need to establish and strengthen these programs to make sure that antibiotics are used prudently. The results of the survey demonstrate, for example, that in several countries there are high levels of use of broad spectrum, what we call broad spectrum antibiotics. And these antibiotics lead to increasing resistance And also, the results of the study showed that there is considerable unnecessarily prolonged antibiotic use after surgery. And these are clear targets for improvement through promoting appropriate antibiotic use. European countries have different strategies to fight antimicrobial resistance. How do countries use the work you do? Well, the situation regarding healthcare-associated infections and microbial resistance and antimicrobial use, which are three issues that are related to each other, as uh, we said, is very diverse across the European countries. So the countries and the hospitals can compare their results with other countries and hospitals and identify targets for improvement. The results are also used to demonstrate the burden of healthcare-associated infections, and this is very useful for increasing the awareness of the issue among healthcare workers and the public and for policymakers and hospital administrators when making decisions about measures to control healthcare-associated infections. As a European citizen, how do I benefit from this work? Does it have an impact on my life? Well, actually, the results of these surveys have contributed a lot to increasing awareness of the problems of healthcare-associated infections, inappropriate antibiotic use, and antimicrobial resistance in European hospitals, and also to measures taken to better map the extent of the problem to prevent this type of infections improve antibiotic use, and eventually control the spread of antibiotic resistance. Of course, ECDC is only one among many actors at the national, uh, international, and of course at the hospital level that make this work possible. It's good that you mention ECDC because it leads me to the next question, that is, what is ECDC added value in doing this work? Well, ECDC provides information and indicators for each country to identify gaps and set improvement targets. But on top of that, the results of this work inform policies that support all countries in the European Union in their effort to prevent healthcare-associated infections. Okay, this podcast is coming to its end. Thank you very much, Diamantis, for this interesting conversation. Thank uh, you. We hope you enjoy listening to this podcast. If you would like to know more, please visit our website ecdc.europa.eu or follow us for the latest news on social media.